I think all of you know the term taqwa, right? You've heard it before. And a lot of times in the Quran, when taqwa is translated, it's translated as fear. But just from a linguistic point of view, taqwa essentially is a fear or actions taken out of fear, precaution, protecting yourself. It comes from wiqaya, which literally means protection. So when you lock the, the house as you leave, that's taqwa. If you're going on a road trip and you left a couple of lights on on purpose and you set the alarm or you told the neighbor or you left the keys with a friend or whatever, all of that's taqwa. In other words, you took proper precaution to not get yourself into trouble. Taqwa is before the fact. Taqwa is before the fact. In other words, you don't want to get yourself into trouble. You don't want to, you know, get, get a ticket so you slow down before the red light comes. That's taqwa. In other words, it's a genuinely healthy, logical attitude for someone who knows there's trouble out there. That's what Allah Azza wa Jal wants from us. Just become awake, aware, conscious people. Be aware of your environment. Know that this thing is going to land you into trouble. It's, I, I remind you something about taqwa that I want to share with you. Allah Azza wa Jal did not tell us or t tell Adam alayhi salam, don't eat from the tree. Don't eat from the tree. He didn't say that. Don't go near the tree. Now, the next part of the ayah is Don't eat from the tree. Don't go near the tree rather. You'll become from the wrongdoers. But there's a step in between. Don't go near the tree. If you do go near the tree, as a result, you'll get tempted by the fruit. Then you will eat the fruit. Then a whole bunch of, and then eventually you'll be from, counted among the wrongdoers. There's a whole process. But as far as Allah is concerned and His knowledge of human nature is concerned, because He knows what He created, He says, once you're within the gravitational force, you get close enough, you will get sucked in. So there, if Adam alayhi salam was told that, you, my brother, cannot say, nah, be, I can handle myself. I got this. It's not haram, is it? It's just like almost haram. You can't do that. Because now you're, you're within the gravitational field. You have to be afraid of the fences and even beyond. You have to stay out of the neighborhood. You got to stay away. You can't even go near it. This is a very powerful thing Allah taught us. Not just to fear Him, but to fear the things that lead us to sin. To be afraid of the things that lead you to sin. You're heading in the wrong direction. You're not doing anything wrong yet, but I can see where this is leading. So stop. Let me give you guys a little bit of an example just so this is not entirely theoretical. So sister comes up to me and says, or the brother comes up to me and says, this uh, Christian girl in college is asking questions about Islam and she's asking about God. Or a Muslim girl comes up to me and says, this, you know, this guy in my college class, he's asking a lot about God and he has these questions. Could you help me answer them? Because he keeps arguing with me. Lady, sister, he's not arguing with you because he has a theological concern. Because those questions have well been answered online and there's plenty of resources on that available. He just wants to spend some more time with you. And maybe deep down inside you already know that. But you come and you say, no, 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 I'm trying to give him da'wah to Islam. And you say, I'm going to help this sister out. She's a sister, inshallah, you know, I want to help her out and we're just going to meet at Starbucks and discuss Tawheed. That's what we're going to do. I mean, this is Dawah to Islam. And then maybe one day, you know, it's not Ramadan yet. So yeah, inshallah ta'ala, right after between Maghrib and Isha, I'm going to take her to this, this, this restaurant. It's a halal restaurant. We're going to do our, our totally halal Dawah. And somebody says, brother, what are you doing? I was like, are you eating, eating food at a restaurant, bro? Is that haram? You know, he's talking about Allah haram. No, but I could see where this is going. And then four months later, bro, there's a sister. She's ready to convert. And I want to marry her. Is she really ready to convert? No, but I think she might. How do I convince my parents? Yeah. And what you're not, and, and this is the halal version of what you tell the Imam. <laughs> what happened in between, we all know. We all, we're not dumb. Okay, I was in college too once. I know how this stuff goes. And when you question the guy, you question the girl, you say, what are you talking about? Astaghfirullah, I would never. Really? You would never? <laughs> you, get, you get sucked in, you don't even realize it. One thing leads to another. One thing leads to another. You have to be afraid of...